Let's start off with the, the NSC on a sustained bull run. For eight straight days, it has been rising. What is happening? Um, there's a lot of corporate news that, that, that has been in the market in this recent month. Um, takeovers, takeovers being delayed. Um, whoa. So there's a lot of activity. And with the money market easing off, uh, yes. the, the treasury bill rate dropping to you know, now up back up to 10.8%. You find funds again moved back to the market. As a digital investor saw that, okay, now there's no longer value this side. Yes. Let's try our luck in the equity market. And so there has been some funds from the retail investors, which was not there from the beginning of the year, that has been moving into the market. Yes. So is there, um, a lot of this activity, is it foreign or is it local? It, it's still 50-50. It's, it's sad enough that the Nairobi Stock Exchange, for it actually to remain sustainably going up, you need a substantial amount of foreign activity. And currently, even today, foreign activity is around 48%. And it has hovered around that mark, 48, 50, sometimes going up very high. So you'll find we are still not yet at a level where we can actually say local institutions and retail investors will actually drive the market. Let's uh, speculate a little here, if you'll allow me. The LIBOR scandal in Britain that has claimed the CEO of uh, Barclays PLC, do you think this is hard? likely to have any huge impact here locally. Barclays, of course, is a big player in this market, though it didn't sh show up in the radar today on the NSE. Uh, you, you find most of the guys who hold Barclays are more of blue chips. And um, I mean institutional investors. Yes. So th their level of knowledge, looking at how what will happen to the head office and what will happen to the Kenya market before it actually transmits down to Barclays Kenya, it it's going to take a while, and there will be really no impact on it. Uh, on the retail side, which most players don't, most retail players don't buy stocks like Barclays. Yes. But for most of them, um, if they're not watching CNBC right now, they might actually not hear about it, but it won't be mentioned in our local business news yes. because of uh, lack of relevance. So you find most people actually might not even know that something like that has happened. So I don't think it will actually have an impact on Barclays Kenya. All right. One of the likely, the takeover news, the M&A news we've been talking about, and you mentioned earlier, is Kennel Cobble, the listed oil market, are likely to delist from the NSC after that Puma takeover goes ahead. But so far, it keeps rising. What do these investors, 8,000 minority investors, what are they reading that we're not reading? Um, there is normally a lot of speculation that comes when... Again, as I said, when there's corporate news, yes. um, whether it's actually going to be valuable or, or not. Um, if, if the stock price is pushed up, guys are able to be bought out. The price for being bought out yet has not yet been concluded. Yes. So you want the price to be as high as possible by the time that, that time comes for negotiations. Um, so when the negotiations are done, you want the price to be as high enough for you to actually make a benefit. Some want it to go up so that they sell out before the price for... Um, uh, for of, of, of the buyout actually is set, yes. so that, that's what's actually driving Kenya Kobe. Because the buyout will happen whether the guys go to court or not. It was just for Puma to prove that they're not going to suck anyone. And truth be said, they're not going to be suck anyone. They can't really get people all the way from Argentina to start to pump, and, they pump uh, fuel at the pump. Yes. So it's a bit unreasonable for from the employees. Side. So those fears of job losses are largely unfounded. You think? I, I don't think so. All right. Uh, uh, yesterday we saw results out of uh, two T stocks, Capturo T and Williamson T. Those, those dropped, and today appears Sassini has followed. Um, there's a bit of a, the lack of a rally today. It's actually one of the biggest losers of the market. What do you think of agriculture stocks, especially with the weather concerns? That, that's a crusher for you, um, and especially T. T just needs the scent of rain for it to bud and a bit of sunshine for it to actually completely not... not it appears not simplistic, to but it's actually very complicated. Yeah, yes. it's a bit, a bit complicated, but yes. to put it simply, that, that, that's what happens. And January to March was not good. There was no rain, there was frost. The, everything was working against them. And you find tea production actually fairly in Kenya, uh, in tandem also with the global tea prices. Um, same as coffee. Coffee prices came down, but production went up. So you might also expect to hear sustaining results not that good as when, when they announce them. So as, as long as the government doesn't put actually measures in place to, 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 to sort out these infrastructural weaknesses in the agricultural sector, which is said enough was even if you look at the budget for this year, the, the allocation of agriculture only went up by 5%. Yes. It's only 53 billion shillings. Right. And that's a key sector to the economy. And you see, as long as there is no goodwill from the government to, do, to, to, to give tax waivers, to put immigration equipment online, it becomes a problem. Talk to me about Uchumi Supermarkets. Uh, the, now marking six years since it reopened, it had a very unfortunate past and had to close for some period of time. But uh, since coming onto the market, it appears to be in a continuous rally. Yes. Um, as, as I said earlier, Uchumi is really rallying because we have six years which were not factored in. Yes. The whole turnaround 
had not been factored in. The, the stock was not trading. The company is now turned around, and people are seeing, okay, at least these guys came from here. They're actually in profit. Yes. So all those six years, all the things that uh, Mr. Jonathan Siano did are actually being factored into the stock. It will reach a point in time that factoring stops, and where investors think this is the right price for Uchumi. Then you now start trading sideways like every other stock. It's an incredible story, isn't it? I just need to throw this in very few, in the last few seconds we have, which is about the Kenya shilling, especially everybody awaiting what happens with the NPC on Thursday. Tricky affair. Um, they've been buying shillings out of the market like they're being paid. I think actually they've just changed their job description to become janitors. Mop up any extra thing that makes the shilling go weak. And that's the strategy that they have been using. If they do actually yield to pressure and uh, bring down the, the CBR rate in tandem with inflation and the other general interest rates, then we will have more pressure on the shilling. Yes. The pressure from the shilling is coming from your widening uh, current account balance and volatile forex uh, reserves. So now if you also want to add uh, low yielding currency to it, yes. then they have a hard job in store for them. So we'll wait to see what they do. Uh, Reginald Kazutu, Head of Fund Management at Amana, thank you very much for coming on.